Hello everyone. Welcome back to yet another session on One Touch Pharmacology. I have been getting a lot of requests to start with general pharmacology. So today in this video, I'll be dealing with pharmacokinetics absorption. Let's try to understand what is pharmacokinetics. Let's just split up the word pharmacokinetics into pharmacon and kinetics. Pharmacon means drug and kinetics means movement. It is movement of the drug in, through and out of the body. In other words, pharmacokinetics means what the body does to the drug. Imagine you have a headache and you swallowed a tablet of paracetamol. First, this tablet has to reach the gut and from there it has to reach the circulation. This is called as absorption. After absorption, the drug is taken to different sites in the body and this process is called as distribution. Once you take a drug, it does not remain in the system forever. Just like food, drug also undergoes metabolism and after metabolism finally the drug is excreted so under pharmacokinetics basically you have absorption distribution metabolism and excretion in this video we'll try to understand what is absorption from the site of administration the drug crosses the biological membrane to reach the systemic circulation. This process is called as absorption. Unless you give the drug intravenously, in every other route, the drug has to cross the biological membranes. Let's try to understand the various drug transport mechanisms. This includes passive diffusion, filtration, carrier mediated transport and pinocytosis. Firstly, let's see what is passive diffusion. Passive diffusion is just like moving in a slide. You don't have to spend any energy to move from the top to the bottom because it's a downhill transport. Similarly, in passive diffusion, the drug moves from a higher concentration gradient to a lower concentration gradient. Thus, there is no expenditure of energy. It is a downhill transport. Most of the drugs that we consume undergo passive diffusion. Passive diffusion is seen better with lipid soluble drugs and it is also dependent on the pH of the drug. Remember, drugs which are weak acids remain non-ionic in acidic medium and hence weak acids are better absorbed in acidic medium whereas drugs which are weak bases are non-ionic in a basic medium. So, passive diffusion is better in a basic medium for drugs which are weak bases. We have seen that lipid soluble drugs are commonly absorbed via passive diffusion. So then what about the non lipid soluble or polar or ionic drugs? These drugs are absorbed mainly via a process called as filtration. All of you might have seen a fishing net. Any fish that is smaller than the pore size of the net can escape from the net. Similarly, a drug that is smaller than the pore size of the biological membrane can enter into the systemic circulation. So polar drugs with a size smaller than the pore sizes of the biological membrane can cross it via the process called as filtration. 
Nextly, we will move on to carrier mediated transport. This process of drug transport is specific because specific carriers are involved in the transport of the drug. Since specific carriers are involved, this process is saturable. That means the drug transport depends upon the number of carrier molecules that are available. The process of carrier mediated transport can be inhibited by analogs of the drug. Carrier mediated transport can be facilitated or active. As the name itself suggests, facilitated transport is non-energy dependent whereas active transport requires expenditure of energy. Lastly, pinocytosis. Pinocytosis is otherwise called as cell drinking. Basically, this mechanism is for absorbing large molecules like vitamin B12. So, drug transport mechanisms basically involves passive diffusion, filtration, carrier mediated transport and pinocytosis. Now, we will move on to bioavailability. This is a very important UG as well as PG question. Bioavailability is defined as the rate and extent to which the active concentration of the drug is absorbed from the given dosage form and reaches the systemic circulation to be available at the desired site of action. So in short what bioavailability means is the fraction of the active concentration of the drug that reaches the systemic circulation and is available for action. Though it is important to understand the definition, but while you answer in your exam, please try to replicate the definitions in the same way how it is given in the textbook. I have taken this definition from Satoskar and I found it the most elaborate and well-defined definition of bioavailability. If you plot a plasma concentration versus time graph of a drug which is taken orally, you will get a graph somewhat like this. The time taken for the drug to reach the maximum concentration is called as Tmax. The Tmax of the drug gives you an approximate idea about the rate of absorption of the drug whereas the area under the curve of such a graph would give you an idea about the extent of absorption. Bioavailability is calculated as area under the curve oral by area under the curve IV into 100. So bioavailability is a fraction and is often denoted as F. So what is the bioavailability of a drug that is given intravenously? So can you guess that? It has to be 100% because Intravenous drug is directly given into the systemic circulation. That's why the bioavailability here is 100. The bioavailability of every other route is usually less than 100%. So can you guess why is the oral bioavailability less than intravenous bioavailability? One of the reasons is incomplete absorption of the drug from the gut and the other most important reason is first pass metabolism in the liver or the intestinal walls. All of us know that biology is a science of exception. So is there any drug which has an oral bioavailability more than intravenous bioavailability? Can you guess that? The answer is digoxin, diazepam and phenytoin. Phenytoin has very less solubility. So usually it precipitates at the injection site. That's why the intravenous bioavailability is less compared to oral bioavailability. 
So what is the clinical significance of bioavailability? One of the important thing is to determine the route of administration of the drug. Say for example, a drug has very, very low oral bioavailability. So there is no point giving the drug orally. You might have to give the drug parenterally. So that's why by knowing the bioavailability of the drug, you can determine which route is suitable for the drug. Knowing the bioavailability is also important in drugs that have a narrow therapeutic index because a slight variation in the bioavailability of the drug can result in toxicity. So what are the factors that affect bioavailability? It includes pharmaceutical as well as pharmacological factors. Now let's look into the pharmaceutical factors that affect bioavailability. Firstly, the dosage form of the drug. A liquid dosage form, say for example, a syrup of a drug is better absorbed than a solid dosage form, say for example, when it is given as a tablet. And among solid dosage form, a capsule is better absorbed than a tablet. This you can observe yourself. Take two glasses of water, take a tablet and capsule. Put a capsule in one glass and put the tablet in another glass. Just look which one dissolves quickly. So you can note that capsules dissolve much quickly compared to tablets. The particle size. Smaller the particle size, better is the absorption. Nextly, the lipid solubility. If the drug is more lipid soluble, bioavailability is more. And based on the excipients and adjuvants, bioavailability can vary. There has been lots of incidents of toxicity, especially with drugs that follow narrow therapeutic index when the brand has brand of the drug is changed. Now let's have a look into the pharmacological factors that affect bioavailability. Most importantly, it is the first pass metabolism. If the first pass metabolism is more, bioavailability of the drug would be less. Secondly, drug interaction. Based on the type of drug interaction, the bioavailability can either increase or decrease. One of the example is tetracycline and calcium. Calcium reduces the absorption of tetracycline. Now, in cases of certain disease states, like say for example, you have a malabsorption syndrome or a disease of gut, the drug absorption may vary and thus affecting the bioavailability. Genetic factors. Genetic polymorphism of the drug metabolizing enzyme can affect the bioavailability of the drug. And lastly, the enterohepatic circulation. Drugs that undergo enterohepatic circulation have a larger bioavailability. Please do like, share and subscribe for more exciting videos. Thank you for watching.